Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Horseman, Data Evangelist with Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Siner. Today, Bob will discuss quality as the rhythm of governance, sponsored by Irwin by Quest. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you would like to chat with us or chat with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And to note, Zoom defaults the chat to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely switch that to network with everyone. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A section. To find the Q&A panels you may, or the chat panel, you may find the icons for those in the bottom middle of your screen. As always, we will send a follow-up email within a couple of business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me turn it over to Danny from Irwin for a brief word from our sponsor. Danny, take it away, my friend. Thanks, Mark. Let me just get this sharing looked after. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for, for taking the time. I think this is a, a particularly germane uh, topic and one that uh, that we're very, very interested in uh, at Irwin by Quest. Um, sorry, just getting my slides to move forward. Um, and the reason I say that is, uh, you know, one thing that we've been doing over the last uh, five years is, is really looking at the temperature and the state of data governance through, uh, through sort of, you know, fairly in-depth surveys. And uh, over those five years, we've been watching data quality rise up uh, in terms of, of uh, importance to the survey respondents. Uh, and as you can see in, in the, the 2023 um, version, uh, data quality is both the, the top of the stack for, for key drivers for data governance, as well as key challenges for data governance, which is, is uh, pretty interesting given that, you know, five years ago, we were really looking more at things like uh, regulatory compliance and things like that. So I think it's top of everybody's mind. Uh, and it's not surprising because there's a lot going on in the world of data governance in terms of, of really how we can drive more value through data governance and, and a lot of initiatives that people are undertaking, uh, you know, not the smallest of which is how are we going to be able to responsibly adopt AI and machine learning in our organization? Um, you know, how can we start looking at, at scoring our data from a value perspective? Uh, how can we, can we make the whole process much more efficient in terms of getting to actionable insights with the delivery of, of much more prescriptive data products, uh, as opposed to just giving people data and letting them go to town with it. And really people starting to in, in, adopt internal and external uh, data marketplaces. And I think all of this is, is really driving that need to ensure that the quality of the data that we're basing our insights on uh, and the quality of data that we're delivering to the organization is as high as as, as possible. And it, it's not just that traditional data data quality uh, a, approach that that I've been used to. I've been in the data business for for thirty five plus years, and um, you know, seen a lot of of, of approaches to data quality. Uh, but the majority of it really looked at the physical world. And, and now in order to support all of these um, uh, initiatives and really make sure that, that the data quality uh, capabilities that we bring to the organization align well with data governance, uh, you need a, a, a different approach. And, and we need to converge uh, a couple of things together to make that a reality. The most important ones being augmented data quality that ability to, to go beyond just, you know, are the physical records complete and are they accurate to, uh, you know, taking advantage of things like, uh, you know, Gen, I, Gen AI, looking at the semantics layer uh, and really automating uh, a lot of the approach uh, where, where we're looking at data in a much more holistic way and being able to observe data uh, as it travels through the pipeline uh, not just for our, our our data consumers, but as well for all the engineers and, and our IT folks that are working with data every day. So this approach is really what's making it valuable to data governance and making sure that we have these things connected together. And once you have that sort of augmented data quality approach, you really want to have, have four key abilities uh, within your, your organization uh, to make it truly valuable and effective within your organization. You want to be able to constantly uh, and, 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 and 
consistently observe the quality of the data at many different levels. Make sure that you're able to measure that and, and understand what those measurements and the trends that are behind those things to make sure that we're going in the right direction. Discover uh, problems within the data beyond just standard physical, this record is wrong, it doesn't fit uh, the, the parameters that are, are you know around that from a physical perspective, but really looking at the business context and then being able to speed up the remediation process and, and take it advantage again of AI and, and, and things like that to make sure that we can make this as fast and as continuous as possible, as opposed to that sort of, you know, business comes up with the concept, throws it over to IT, they implement it. And then after some period of time, we see how we're doing. So it is a very different approach to data quality. And, and I'm not going to go through this entire framework because I want to get to Rob. Uh, that's the reason I'm here is to, to listen to, to, to Rob's wisdom. But, but really, it's taking it, as I said before, out of that sort of foundational health of looking at uh, the physical data. Is it accurate? Is it, you know, are, are the records complete? You know, when was the last time the, the, uh, the records were refreshed and things like that? And moving it up into that sort of business context and looking at quality from a consistency perspective, accuracy, and validity for the, the stated purpose of that data, what you're using it for, and making sure that it's it's fit for purpose, fit for use. Uh, very, very important, especially as we move into uh, AI governance, which data governance is a huge part of, of that in terms of, of being successful. Uh, and, and then making sure that we always have those metrics uh, for a, you know, a couple of really important reasons. The number one reason is to let people know how our data quality is trending so that they know what we need to do next to make sure that the data quality is everything that we want it to be, but also to feed back into the organization the value of data governance, the value of data quality, so that our leaders can make the decisions that they need to make based on, on you know, real data points. So you know, data about the data, uh, you know, leveraging that data. So it, 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 it's an exciting time in data quality. It's an exciting time as it really becomes part and parcel of data governance out there. If this is, and, and, and basically that's the approach that we've taken with our, our Irwin data intelligence capabilities, which is bringing data quality, putting it right at the center of it and, and a modern data quality, augmented data quality approach. So uh, that'll go along with our catalog and our, our governance and literacy capabilities, as well as our, our, our marketplace. So if this is something that, that's of interest to you, uh, I would say, please, please come and speak to us at Irwin.com. Uh, and, and we'd like to see where you are on your data quality, data governance journey, how those things are starting to mesh together and see where we can help. So with that, I will turn it back to... Rob, and get to the real meat of, of the reason why we're all here. But thanks for your time. Well, thank you so much, Danny. And, and thanks to, to Irwin for sponsoring today's webinar and help making these things happen. And if you have any questions for Danny, feel free to submit them in the Q&A panel, as he will likewise be joining us for the Q&A portion uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, now, let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher emeritus of the data administration newsletter, tdan.com. Bob was recently awarded the DEMA Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. Uh, Take it away, my good friend, Mr. Siner. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. <laughs> okay, that's good. Wow. So thank you very much, Danny. Um, Danny Sadowell from Irwin by Quest. Always great to have you as a sponsor. Always great to co-present with you. And Mark, it's a pleasure having you with me uh, to uh, kind of host this webinar. Um, just for your information, everybody who's in attendance this is the 149th webinar in the Real World Data Governance Series. So unbelievable. Next month's going to be a special month. We're going to celebrate the 150th uh, occurrence of the Real World Data Governance Series. So when we started, when I was sharing these topics, when Shannon and I were working on the topics for the webinars, um, this one was an interesting one because I wasn't 
really certain that the name was going to resonate with a lot of people and that it would attract a lot of people. But what I found is a lot of people were very interested in, in data quality. Number one, as Danny was saying, it's the, it's the biggest intent for organizations as well as the biggest challenge. Um, but also using the idea of the music context as I go through the webinar today. So you'll see there's a lot of references to music, um, maybe a reference to a band or two somewhere along the way. But you know, when we talk about quality as the rhythm of governance, it's what organizations are, they may not all have the same definition of what data quality is, but that's the reason why organizations are implementing data governance programs to improve the quality, improve the confidence in the data. And what I mean by as the rhythm of governance it's kind of the underlying tone. All those great tunes that Mark was playing before the webinar, the, the underlying rhythm behind that, that's really the basis on which the tunes are, are built. So we're gonna use that as the context for today's conversation where, where I'm talking about data quality as the rhythm of data governance. Just real quickly before I get started, as many of you probably know, this is, as I said, 149th occurrence in this webinar series, 150 will be next month. Speaking of next month, the topic on the third Thursday of the month will be fostering a data literate culture with data governance. And I'm probably gonna make reference to that a couple of times during the webinar today, because I think that's what we're trying to do in our organizations. If we want quality to become kind of what's sitting behind everything that we're doing in terms of data governance, we need to foster a data literate culture. Um, I've written a couple of books on data governance, non-invasive data governance, and non-invasive data governance strikes again. Those are available at your favorite booksellers. Um, I've put a, together a couple of different learning plans that are available through the Dataversity Training Center. The first one is called non-invasive data governance. Second one, non-invasive metadata governance. And then the third one was business glossaries, data dictionaries, and data catalogs. So please visit the Dataversity Training Center um, to learn of these learning plans and others that are available to you. KIK Consulting, that's the name of my consulting business. KIK stands for Knowledge is King. People ask me if that's my initials. I say, no, my initials are BS, and I didn't want to call myself BS Consulting and Educational Services. But please go visit KIK Consulting if you want to learn more about non-invasive data governance. The last item on this introduction screen, actually, there's a recent change to it. Um, I am adjunct faculty at the at Carnegie Mellon University here in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where it used to be called the Chief Data Officer Program, but beginning in the fall, they're actually changing the name from the Chief Data Officer Program to the Chief Data and AI Officer. So that might be relevant to a lot of you. I'm not going to go into a lot of details about AI today. Um, I'm appreciative of the stuff that Danny shared about wow, if we're going to do AI, we need to differentiate between AI governance and data governance. Um, but the data is going to sit at the core of everything we do in AI. And, and the quality of that data is going to be specifically important as you know, organizations are already creating AI strategies. And to some, they're not even incorporating data governance into that. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to educate people on what AI governance is and where data governance fits in to that picture. Okay, what are we gonna talk about today? Um, there are several topics that I wanna address. The first one, and they're all gonna have kind of that musical theme through them. Um, again, this is different. I'm not used to doing this in, in a webinar. We'll see how it goes. But we're gonna talk about the pivotal role of data quality just in having a successful data governance program or a successful data governance practice within your organization. And I mentioned before how the rhythm behind the music really is something that everything is built upon. Um, and so we're gonna talk about how the rhythm of quality enhances data reliability, accuracy, and relevance. Then I'm gonna to wanna to share with you some techniques for taking the data quality measures and the data quality, uh, the idea of data quality and implementing data quality, um, techniques for integrating that into your data governance framework. I'm also going to share a data governance framework with you that it might be something that you might be interested in, but you can see how data quality basically works throughout that framework. And then I'm going to talk about strategies for measuring and monitoring data quality to maintain, <clears throat> excuse me, that consistent beat. 
And if we have some time, I'm going to share with you a handful of examples of transformative impact. If not, I'm going to go through them real quickly at the end of the session, and then you'll always have them in this recording and in the slides that you have. So let's start out with definitions. I always seem to start out with definitions because not everybody is on the same page to, as to what these things mean or if they're the same or if they're different. Um, if you've been participants in this webinar series in the past, you can see that my definitions for these things are getting shorter. And again, I, I always define data governance as the execution and enforcement um, of authority over the definition, production, and usage of data and data-related assets. Well, we can cut out a whole bunch of that and just know that at the end of the day, we need to execute and enforce authority over the data for our organization. That's to improve quality, to improve risk management, security, privacy, um, no matter what approach you take, whether it's non-invasive or it's command and control or kind of the traditional, if we build it, they will come approach. At the end of the day, data governance needs to execute and enforce authority over data. So that's just the bottom line of the definition to data governance. My definition of data stewardship is formal accountability for data. And actually I refer to the people who are data stewards in the organization. These are people that already have relationships to the data that are being held formally accountable for what they do, being held formally accountable for how they define data, how they produce data, how they use data. If they are, if they have a relationship to a data to the data and they're being held formally accountable, as you've probably heard me say before, I say everybody is a data steward. Get over it. If they if they are if they have a relationship to the data and they're being held accountable for what they're doing with the data, they're a steward. So let's get into what we're going to talk about today, data quality. And I, I'm not going to read through this definition with you. You can see it on the screen. This is the definition that DEMA uses for data quality. And I think it, it addresses some of the things that Danny talked about in the uh, lead into this session about having the data that's fit for use, fit for its intended purpose within the organization. Um, something that people can have uh, can look to to have more confidence in the data. I've talked in past webinars about data confidence levels and more and more organizations are starting to assess the confidence that people have in data and recognizing that data quality is really stands behind the, the reason why we're even doing data governance in the first place. So I wanted to start out with that as the, the context, the, the, the definitions that I use for data governance and for data stewardship. Um, I happen to love this diagram on, or this picture on the right-hand side of the, uh, the diagram. Like I said, there's gonna be a musical theme throughout. That is literally a metronome. No pun intended. Okay, pun intended. But um, really we wanna talk about the qu how quality really plays that pivotal role in successful governance practices. And the things that I want to talk about are, you know, quality is the foundation of that data confidence level that I just talked about, the foundation of trust and reliability for the data, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice, um, compliance and risk management, enhanced decision making. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how data quality, how data quality is pivotal in your governance practices to achieve all of these things. So the first one on the list is the foundation of trust and reliability. And so that is one of the key roles of data quality is to get people to have confidence in the data that they're using. So there's lots of things that we as data governance practitioners can do to kind of build in quality as the rhythm of governance and to highlight the role that data quality plays in the successful practices. And so to achieve that foundation of trust and reliability in the data, um, we need to assure that there's consistent and accurate data. We need to um, take the steps that are necessary to enhance people's ability to be able to make decisions from the data. As I've mentioned several times already, that data confidence level, um, people need to have confidence in the data in order to use it for things like generative AI, to use it for things like artificial intelligence or business intelligence or data intelligence in general. So again, one of the pivotal roles is kind of building that foundation of trust and reliability. And one of those actions that we can take is to build stakeholder confidence in the data. 
streamlining operations and efficiency, mitigating risk and, and ensuring compliance. These again are steps that we as data practitioners can take to build that foundation of trust and reliability. Again, as, as, as quality becomes that rhythm behind the effective data governance program. As I said, compliance and risk management, what are some of the things we can ensure in our organizations that the, that the um, regulatory controls that are being placed upon us, or even that we're placing on ourselves internally through data quality standards, that people in the organization are adhering to those standards. You know, identifying and mitigating potential risks within the organization, we should be talking to the people within the organization. Data quality isn't just about the bits and bytes of the data and, and how accurate it is. It is built into really everything that we do. And so we need to understand from people across the organization um, how, how we can identify and, and, potent and mitigate the potential risks that they have. Protecting sensitive information, again, is one of the pivotal roles. A lot of data uh, governance programs initially focus on privacy and on the protection of sensitive data. Reducing legal and financial penalties. Well, if your organization is being slapped with some penalties for legal, uh, legal and financial penalties in terms of the data that you're providing, um, Again, we need to build compliance and risk management into that role of, of data quality as we're building quality into our successful practices and enhancing transparency and accountability. When I talked earlier about the definition of data stewardship is the formalization of accountability. If we consider the fact that potentially everybody in the organization is a data steward, they need to know the importance of data quality. They need to understand the role that they play in implementing and, and effectively improving the quality of data within the organization. Enhancing decision-making, um, again, these are all pivotal roles that data quality can play in implementing your data governance practices. Because if we're looking to enhance people's decision-making, that seems to be a line in every playbook that one of the reasons that we are implementing data quality, that we are implementing data governance programs is to enhance decision making. Well, it's it's nice to say that, but unless you really make that real and, and find out specific, or figure out or articulate specific ways in which um, the improvement of the quality of the data, the improvement of the governance uh, of the data is enhancing decision making, well, here's some of the ways that uh, we can indicate that data governance and data quality are really the backbone between or behind the enhanced decision making. And that includes providing accurate insights, supporting strategic planning. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here in a couple of minutes, enabling timely responses in terms of when people have questions about the data and they're trying to make effective decisions from that data, uh, improving operational efficiency and facilitating any means of predictive analytics within your organization. In terms of operational efficiency, what are some of the things that we can do around data quality to implement our successful governance practices is we can focus on streamlining processes, making certain that we're engaging the right people at the right time, you know, reducing errors in the data. Right now, there's probably a backlog of data quality issues within your organization. If you've articulated what those issues are, what those errors are, you know, and, and what impact it's having on the operational efficiency of the organization. Again, these are things that we can include in our data quality processes to successfully implement data governance across our organization. Improved satisfaction. While this dude on the right-hand side doesn't look happy, I don't know who is, he looks like a, a, a satisfied customer. But again, we got to understand what the role of data quality is in getting improved customer satisfaction, making certain that as we're personalizing customer experiences and as we're uh, interacting more with our clients, that there's reduced service errors that are associated with poor data quality, ensuring accurate information, speeding up response times, building customer trust. Again, this is just another one of those ideas as to why data quality plays a pivotal role in the successful implementation of a data governance program. 
All right, let's move on to the next topic. I want to talk also about how kind of building that consistent level of quality into your data governance program, into people's day-to-day -day activities, how that enhances reliability, accuracy, and relevance. And I can see we're going to run out of time quickly with slides, so I'm going to go through some of these quickly, but certainly you can ask questions about them, send additional questions. We'll be happy to answer those as well. But let's talk about how the rhythm of quality enhances these things within an organization. So a couple of things that it does, it establishes a cons consistent data validation processes. Do you have those? Do you promote regular data audits? Do you ensure continuous monitoring? Let's go through each of these as well. So the first one that of really how a rhythm of data quality enhances these things is to focus on enhancing um, or establishing consistent data validation processes. I know that for many of the organizations that I work with, there may be a data quality check that's applied every once in a while, but there's no consistent manner. It's not built into their processes to continually um, evaluate the, and, and validate the quality of the data. So what are some of the ways that we can establish consistent data validation processes? What would be to standardize data entry practices? I mean, a lot of the data quality problems actually start where the data is being created. So standardizing that the, the way that data is being entered into the system is one way to establish data validation processes. Do it, let's do it right up front where we get started. Using, um, using technology to do automated error checking, implementing regular data quality, um, data audits in the organization. These are things that if you're not doing them right now, and your true intention is to build data quality into your data governance program, these are some activities that you might want to think about doing. You might want to think about if we're going to really build quality into data governance, we can't just do a data quality check every once in a while. We need to use the tools that are available to us, implement regular audits, enforce the data quality rules. It's one thing to define the data quality rules, but getting other people to follow those data quality rules is not necessarily as easy. I always suggest that we work with our stakeholders to define those data quality rules. We as data governance practitioners don't just create those roles and hand them to people and tell them that they need to be followed. So again, we're looking at, at, at quality, the rhythm of quality enhancing our data governance practices across the or organization. So enforcing the data quality rules, providing real-time validation and feedback, all of those things are really important for um, building data quality into our governance practices within our organizations. Another way to build quality into that rhythm, uh, having a, a, a rhythm of quality in our data governance program is to promote those regular data audits and cleansing. Again, ask yourself about your organization. Are you scheduling routine data reviews? Are you scheduling those before you do a massive system integration? Are you making certain that the data quality is good as we move from system A to move to system B? Once we have all the system, all the data where we need it, how are we going to sure, make sure or assure that the quality of the data is, is consistently high? Again, to, to drive up that data confidence level that people have in the data. Identifying and correcting errors, removing duplicate entries. Again, if we build these things into our data integration efforts, our data quality efforts, any of our data movement efforts, then we're going to be building data quality into the governance of that data. So regularly um, promoting regular data audits and data cleansing, that's a key, uh, a key driver to how we're gonna make certain that data quality persists through our data governance program. I know you're going to get tired of the, of the graphic on the right. It will stop at some point. It's not going to keep going around in circles. But the whole idea here was we need to, as I said, the if you think of the rhythm in each of the each of the tunes, each of the songs that you listen to, that kind of builds the basis of what we're doing. So if we can ensure that we're monitoring and improving the quality of the data through real time data quality tracking through identifying different trends and anomalies, automating alerts for data issues, 
that seems to be something that's great built into a lot of the products that things like Danny was talking about is how do you know when there's a data quality issue? Who's being made aware of it? Who's accountable for making certain that that issue is being addressed? So you can ensure continuous monitoring and, and improvement of the data by implementing those automated alerts at where the system can be used, where the intelligence of the system can be used to determine where there's data discrepancies, data issues, data problems, and then use the software to alert the appropriate person. So again, we need those regular feedback loops as well from people. Again, we don't ask them one time what challenges they have with the data. We need to make certain that we're opening that communication so that they can communicate more than just that one time. If they see, they are the eyes and ears, the people in the organization, the business stakeholders, they're the eyes and ears of data quality and data governance within your organization. If they don't have a channel to provide regular feedback to those people who are the practitioners, the administrators of the data governance program, then they could be just not, the, the, nothing could ever move potentially on those data quality issues. They have to have a mechanism for reporting what the problems are with the data to the people that can actually impact change within the organization. And forever, you should keep looking at your, your data practices and looking for ways to adjust and to improve your data practices. Again, another way of ensuring continuous monitoring and improvement of data quality as part of your data governance program. And I can't stress the importance of this one enough is, is that and it's being taught in the Carnegie Mellon program that I spoke about. It's every organization says as they're building out their data objectives, their data strategy, that it really needs to be based on a business strategy. Because if your data strategy isn't aligned with your business strategy, at some point there's going to be a disconnect. At some point they're going to not understand why are we trying to implement data quality? Why are we trying to implement data governance? We need to make certain that we're aligning our data practices with those things that the organization has stated are, are, are the objectives of the organization. I'm working with an organization right now to specifically focus on what are the objectives of their strategic level council for data governance? And then also aligning the things that the administrators of, of data, data governance are doing that are going to help that council to achieve those objectives. Again, aligning data practices with business objectives is key. It's key as a way to make certain that as we're trying to build quality into what we're doing as part of governance, that we're aligned with the things that are most important to the organization. So ensuring that the data that the data that we're working on is relevant to the strategic goals, facilitating data-driven decision making. As I talked a little bit earlier about what can we do to help to enhance people's ability to make decisions, integrating data with business processes, supporting um, business targets. All of these things are things that we can do to align data practices with the business objectives of the organization. Again, if you take one thing away from this webinar, I think that's an important thing to take away is, is that we need to make certain that what we are doing data governance wise, what we are doing data quality wise, has is, is helping us to achieve some of the business objectives for our organization. And then the last item that I have here is, is to foster a culture of accountability and precision. I mentioned that I'm gonna, I was gonna refer back to the webinar next month in this session, um, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about is building data literacy into the culture of the organization. But if we if we have a consistent rhythm of quality as a backbone to our data governance program, you know we can foster that culture of accountability and precision. And what are some of the ways that we can do that? It, by establishing clear data ownership. Again, I shy away from the term ownership, but I think it's appropriate here. Typically, I suggest that the organization owns the data and people are stewards of that data. They're there to take care of that data, to make certain that its quality is high and that it's confident that people have a high level of confidence in that data. So what can we do to foster a culture of accountability and precision? We can establish the clear ownership. We can set defined quality standards. We can encourage accurate entry of the data at the point of entry of the data. Um, implement regular performance reviews along the way, promote transparency in how 
data is being handled and understanding who's handling the data and making certain that they understand the rules associated with well, how they can handle that data, how they can share that data, how they can improve the quality of that data. All right, we're gonna go into the next topic here. The next topic is I wanna share with you techniques for integrating quality measures into an existing data governance framework. So if you have a framework, and I'm gonna share with you mine here in one second, it's really all about technique. And that's the, the reason I have the picture of the, uh, the karate person on the right-hand side, because moving from one level to another, blue belt, black belt, whatever dojo you're following, whatever the belts are that are above the black belt, it all has to do with technique. And so I wanted to, to make certain I focused on techniques for integrating data quality measures into your existing framework. So the one thing that I didn't put into these slides, and I just added it recently and then sent it to, uh, to Mark to, to, so he would have a copy to share with all of you, is the data quality or is the data governance framework that you may have seen in other webinars that I've done. So we're talking about techniques for integrating quality measures into an existing governance framework. Again, there's many different governance frameworks, but using something like this that, that calls out those core components of a successful governance program across the top, calls out each of the different levels of the organization that we need to know each of those core components at each of those levels. That's gonna be, where does data quality fit in? Where do the metrics fit in? You can see there's a column specifically, the, the next to the right column, uh, next to the far right column is all about metrics and understanding even what the quality metrics are that are important to the executive level, the strategic, tactical, operational. I've used this framework to do webinars on roles and responsibilities and talked about having an executive steering committee here, a, a strategic council here, your, your subject matter expert stewards here. So again, you can use this framework to set up your program, but we're gonna go back to talking about techniques to integrate quality measures into these things, uh, establishing quality standards, conducting regular quality assessments. And if you can see, there's a consistency in the message that I'm sharing with you. And that is that things need to be repeated. Data quality is not a one and done, and oh, we improved our quality, it's done. Well, what about tomorrow? What about next year? What about five years from now? You know, it's not a one and done. So we need to, do these things. We need to have the regular audits. We need to be speaking to our stakeholders regularly. We need to give them a, um, a mechanism for them to be able to provide feedback. Again, all these things are not ones and dones. They're things that need to be um, need to be established. Again, you don't do the rhythm of a song just once. It's repeated throughout the, the throughout the song. Again, quality is the rhythm of governance. Thought it made sense at the time. Sounds like it's making sense. At least I hope it is. Um, the first step is to establish quality standards, and that includes these things, establishing quality benchmarks, aligning the standards, as I mentioned earlier, with the business goals of the organization. Let's not be improving the quality of data that is not going to help us to achieve our business goals. Or eventually you may want to get to that data, but if we're going to need to focus on the most critical data first, certainly aligning your standards with the data that's gonna help us to achieve our business goals is gonna be really important. Involving stakeholders in standard development, um, regularly reviewing and updating standards. And again, that's a, a message of consistency. We're gonna regular, regularly review and update standards. It's not, we develop a standard once and it sits and gets stale after a year, five years, 10 years. There needs to be that consistent rhythm behind quality in terms of data governance within your organization. Communications is also not another one and done. We need to communicate the standards and then we need to communicate them again and again and again. I heard a statistic the other day that people need to hear things eight times or seven times in order for them to truly understand them. So if we're gonna establish quality standards, we need to repeat those standards to people as well. Now let's talk about conducting those regular data assessments, scheduling the routine data quality checks, utilizing the tools that are available to us to do that automated checking of the, the quality of the data. Oftentimes there's pick lists and things for people to choose from when they're entering data into a system. But if that data, whatever they pick on that pick list doesn't relate well to the other data, 
we need to, to narrow down that pick list and say, okay, you've already said it's this customer type, it's this transaction type. These are the options that you can choose from. So again, we can use automation to, as it says here, to automate the assessment tools um, as a part of just regular assessments and regular improvements of quality in the organization. Comparing the data against the quality benchmarks, identifying and addressing those anomalies. You know, we want to make that that channel open for the stakeholders to provide feedback, to let us know what anomalies they're seeing in the data. We can use intelligence built into the tools to also help us to perhaps catch some of these anomalies before they become really problematic in the organization. And then there's deploying data quality tools. As I said, implementing automation, implementing the tools and the technologies that are available to you to deploy to deploy data quality just again as a rhythm as a regular occurrence within our data governance program utilizing real time data quality measures integrating again you can go back and you can look at the subjects under each of these topics but again these are different techniques for in, for integrating quality measures into what exist whatever existing framework you have within your organization or a new framework if you're developing a framework from scratch Empowering data stewards. Again, I know I used the term data owner earlier, but the stewards are really potentially everybody in the organization that has, has a relationship to the data that is formal. So let's say that's somebody that's defining data as part of their job. Let's not include one of my favorite statements. Let's, let's not include the cheeseburger definitions, where the definition of a cheeseburger is a burger with cheese. The definition of a, a student account number is an account number for a steward. We need to engage those people that have accountability for defining the data. We need to uh, encourage accountability for people who are producing data to produce high quality data. And we certainly need to provide the ability for those people that are using data to use data in the most effective way. So these are the people in your organization who are your data stewards. They're just doing their jobs, defining, producing, and using data. When they become accountable for how they define, produce, and use data, they actually become stewards. And that's why I say potentially everybody in the organization is a data steward. So how do we empower our data stewards? By providing comprehensive training programs to them, by making certain that the role of the steward is clearly defined for them. Um, one thing that's not on here is the idea of recognizing people as stewards instead of assigning them to be data stewards. So if they understand how they became a data steward because they're using sensitive data and they're expected to protect that data, they're gonna understand that stewardship is not something that really is over and above what they're presently doing. It's kind of one of the core tenets of the whole concept of being non-invasive in your approach to governance. So we need to empower our stewards. We need to offer continuous support. Again, not a one and done. Um, we need to recognize and reward stewardship efforts. Again, it's much better to be recognized for something, recognized for your relationship to data, rather than being assigned to be a data steward because being assigned something immediately, at least to me, feels like it's over and above what I'm presently doing. We can foster continuous improvement. Again, not one and done. Encourage regular feedback loops. As I mentioned before, the rhythm of a song is something that's played over and over again. These are things that need to be played over and over again in terms of data quality as part of your data governance program. Implementing iterative, iterative reviews, adapting new technologies. Again, don't want to read through all these, but I do have a bunch of slides and I still want to get through. Um, so I may speed it up a little bit here, but again, glad to answer questions about these things. So let's spend a minute talking about the strategies for measuring and monitoring data quality. Just again, to, to maintain that consistent consistent beat, that rhythm behind, uh, behind the song that is data governance. Never consider data governance a song before, but if it's a song, we need to have that rhythm we need to have that cons consistent beat of data quality behind it. So what are some of the things we can do? There's strategies for defining key metrics, implementing automated. Let's go through each of these one by one. And then I'm going to really quickly go through some of those examples of, of some organizations before I throw it back to Mark 
and Danny to see if we have any questions for today. So what are some of the strategies for measuring and monitoring data quality, um, defining the key data quality metrics? Again, no pun intended. Sure, there's a pun with the keys on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, but defining those key quality metrics. What does the accuracy of data entries mean? What is the accuracy of data entries in relationship to other data that is being entered? Are there discrepancies that need to be pointed out? These are things that, that are, are kind of built into what we do in terms of data quality supporting the governance program. The, making certain that we've defined what the completeness of information is, make certain that certain fields are not optional. One of the things I've heard is that more people were born on 1231 Oh, one than any other day because that was the default date that was used for the date of birth. I mean, we want to make certain that we're consistent in how we're um, how we're applying data sources across the organization, timeliness of the data updates. Again, defining key data quality metrics is a key strategy for measuring and monitoring. And again, using the framework that I shared earlier, there's a whole column, a whole core component that is set up to make certain that we're addressing the quality metrics the way that we need to. I mentioned earlier the automated data quality checks, you know, doing real-time data validation, monitoring for anomalies in the data where, hey, this piece of data doesn't make sense when joined up with that other piece of data. I talked about the consistency of, of having scheduled data quality audits as a strategy, as a way to, to monitor and maintain a consistent data quality edge to your data governance program. Integration with existing systems, boy, that seems to be a key time where organizations are focusing on data quality is when we're moving from systems A, B, and C to system D and all the different, uh, there's a lot of data problems in systems A, B, and C. When we're integrating systems with other systems, when we're um, building new systems or we're developing ERP or CRM systems within our organizations, that's a key time to start to apply some of these data governance and data quality principles. And then automating reports and alerts wherever possible. Again, it's just another strategy for measuring and monitoring data quality as part of your program. Conducting regular data quality efforts, scheduling periodic data reviews, um, all of these are things, identifying and correcting data issues, as part of those data quality reviews. It's one thing to do the review. It's one thing to have recommendations of actions that you can take as an organization, but until somebody is, until a working team or until certain people are given the formal accountability to resolve things, the stewards of the organizations, again, formal accountability for the management of data, um, we're not gonna be able to identify and correct issues. We're not gonna be able to assess the data against these quality standards that so many organizations are presently working on. I thought this was a funny image on the right-hand side because some of you may not even recognize what this is. And so the old um, term of dashboard uh, always meant the, the dashboard of a car. And um, this is actually an eight track. If you've never seen an eight track before, it's an older version of even something like a cassette player within your your organization within your uh, within your car for playing music in your car. Well, we're talking about a different type of dashboard here. We're talking about establishing data quality dashboards that will help people in the organization to visualize key data quality metrics to provide real time data insights. People want to know how good is the data. If I'm going to have the confidence that I need to be able to improve the way that I'm making decisions, how am I going to know that? How am I going to have that, that understanding, that confidence that the data is of high quality? It's going to be through the dashboards and the things that you provide to them. Utilizing data quality reporting. I don't know if many of your organizations are doing regular data quality reporting as part of that rhythm of data quality to improve your data governance program. But generating you know, comprehensive reports, customizing the reports, depending on who's seeing the reports, automating how these reports are being generated. So you're not requiring somebody to manipulate data before they push a button to generate the report. Again, another strategy for measuring and monitoring data quality um, to maintain that consistent beat in your data governance program is really important. 
So, Mark, usually I end here, and I, I do want to, I have the examples of transform, transformative impact. I'm going to spend a minute or two just to highlight the slides on the screen so that when people go back to see these, they'll see those examples of the, the impact that quality-driven data governance has had on organizations. So I'm going to come back to this slide here in one minute. Let's go through the examples of transformative impact. Again, enhanced decision making. I talked about that earlier. Improved regulatory compliance, increasing operational efficiency, elevating customer satisfaction. You're not going to be able to do any of these things unless you have high quality data. And the data and the quality of the data is not going to govern itself. It's going to need to be a part of your governance program. So again, I'm just going to flash through these quickly, talk about the reliable data sources, how reduced errors, how informing strategies are used to enhance people's decision-making capabilities. Improving regulatory compliance. Again, the, the quality of the data that's being reported, the quality of the data that's being used is something that we need to be compliant about. So again, looking for accurate reporting, audit readiness, risk mitigation, increasing operational efficiency. I talked about that a little bit earlier. Just wanted to share, you know, you can streamline your processes, you can optimize your use of resources, get to the point where if people have a higher level of confidence in the data, they can get to faster decision-making. Elevating customer satisfaction. Again, the importance of accurate information, quality information in order to do those things. If your organization is talking about enhancing or elevating your customer satisfaction, potentially these are some things that you're focusing your data quality program on within your organization. And then the last example I wanted to share before I turn it over to Mark is just there's many organizations that are looking to become data-driven, become innovative, use AI within their organization, but they don't necessarily have a clear idea as to how data is going to uh, improve that within the organization. So enhancing insights, faster prototyping, market adaptability, these are all things that will, are examples of transformative impact that improving the quality of data is going to improve the uh, the 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 um, acceptability and the um, the positive impact that your data governance program is having on your organization. With that, Mark, I am going to turn it back to you to see if we have any questions for Danny and I today. There are some great questions in the Q&A panel and some great discussion in chat. Um, one question that pops up in Q&A is something that I know you and I have had a had chats about, but uh, often is a recurring theme or 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 rhythm that we've run across. And uh, deciding uh, who the data owners or deciding data owners is is tougher as it brings accountability. No team or department likes to voluntarily take this responsibility. What is the advice or guideline on on assigning data owners and data stewards? Well, first of all, I think I mentioned, and I'll let Danny answer that as well, but I don't like the term owner because it implies that it's theirs and they own it when it's when the data is truly owned by the organization. So um, I don't I, I think that you need to look to the people that are already in your organization that have the accountability for the quality of the data that own perhaps the system. Um, again, ownership implies exactly the opposite of stewardship. Stewardship is taking care of something for somebody else. Look it up in the dictionary. That is literally the definition. Um, I would say that you need to see who are the present decision makers. I always suggest look at some of the existing initiatives and the people that are in the room who are the decision makers associated with certain domains of data, certain systems of data. They may be your owners. They may not, they may say it's my data, I own it, I own it, until they have some accountability and then they may run for the hills. But um, again, the idea is that these are the people, look for the people within the organization who already have some of these accountabilities and formalize them rather than assigning them or giving them to, them, to people as new. Danny, you have any thoughts on that? Um, you know, I think you really nailed it with the with with that last point that you made in terms of of, of kind of approaching it from, uh, you know, you're getting this because you're good at it as opposed to, hey, 
you know, you've got some spare time or we perceive you have some spare time. So now we're going to give you this new uh, job that nobody else wants. So, you know, I think that that it's all part and parcel of that selling uh, uh, aspect that you were talking about, Bob, this idea of, of what is the, the benefit? How does this tie back to the, the strategies and goals of the business? So that, you know, you people can actually see the benefit of taking this on. Um, the other thing that, that I've seen in working with our customers is, you know, especially from an owner perspective, is, you know, who's got the who's got the, the power, who's got the juice to actually make a difference with that data? Because that's that's really important. If you're the owner, nobody wants to be the owner of something that that isn't perceived well. Um, and, and, but you don't have the ability to actually change that perception. So look at who has the ability, who has the, 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 the sort of juice and the, and the budget to make a difference around that data. And then, you know, let them understand the benefit of, of the role that they're going to take on and how it ties back to, you know, what's, what's really important to the organization and, and the goals and, and things that they're trying to achieve. I think it, 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 it's always selling uh, and positioning, but I think that, that your, your idea of, of, of doing that from a, listen, you, you know what you're doing here. You're the best person for this, not the opposite, which as you say is just, hey, by the way, we've got something new for you to do. So uh, <laughs> you know, there goes your Friday night, right? <laughs> well, and lack of ownership is a certain way or lack of stewardship is a, a certain way for your data governance program to fail. Oh, if there's yeah. nobody, if everybody washes their hands of having that level of accountability, that can't be acceptable within the organization. Your executives aren't going to stand for that. Somebody needs to have that responsibility. Again, it's a difference between assigning and recognizing people that are already in that position of power. I love what you the way you answered that, Danny. I learned everything. Just to, you, oh, <laughs> Just to segue off that, somebody in chat had uh, said something that I really liked. Um, you can't hold somebody accountable if they don't know what good looks like. So I think that's <laughs> that's rather apt. Very wise. <clears throat> yeah. Um, who should be using the data quality tools in an organization? Thinking about the need to keep some guardrails in place to ensure the standards are constantly, consistently applied with the tools. I'll let you take that one first, Danny. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, specifically, again, it, it comes down to, you know, who who's at that sort of, who's on the critical path um, and, and who has the capability to make, you know, those, those the, the results of those tools, uh, you know, effective within the organization. So, you know, we've been doing a lot around and looked at the role of data engineers uh, in organizations, and they, they have a an important role to play in data quality. It seems like a good place, especially for, you know, more of the technical and remediation side of things. Um, but, you know, uh, again, the data steward is is going to be the, the person I would see, you know, at least with our successful customers that are going to have a lot of that, that sort of, um, you know, the tools that are automating the, the 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 profiling, the the auditing, the 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 you know the quality checks, all of those things, um, because they're also the person that are then going to be responsible to take the data that comes from the those ongoing processes. That if you're doing it right or consistently running in the background, they're not waiting to, for the next project to come up. They are part and parcel of, uh, as Bob says, the rhythm of, of data in your organization. Um, so, you know, there, there's a number of people, obviously, depending on what kind of data, uh, you know, there's, there's you know, uh, there's schools of thought that, you know, the folks that are administering those data and the data and the data sources are also going to want to have at least access. The key here is, is how do you get, you know, how do you get that, that, that stuff to be working, uh, you know, by rote, if you will, uh, and learning as it goes, putting it in the hands of the people that are that are going to be able to apply those tools at the level that that the tool is addressing. So, especially around you know physical remediation of data, uh, but making sure that you also have this tightly integrated and and accessible to folks like the uh, the data stewards that are then going to 
incorporate you know the level of quality the quality score into that value score that we talked about uh, the people that are going to be reporting up to the uh, data office and the data leaders in terms of where we're going, how we're trending, uh, and then, you know, enable to to be able to articulate the requirements for the next step uh, and, and that next iteration of data quality. In I, terms of I, how I really do. like that idea of the data engineers working with the data stewards, because I see oftentimes the data quality tools are in the hands of technicians. Um, and they're, they're not necessarily as user friendly or business friendly. So it's a combination of those stewards who are really driving to improve the quality of the data within the organization, working with those engineers that know the tool and can help them to set up. But somebody mentioned earlier, if you don't know what's right and what's wrong, it's it's very difficult to improve quality. So part of our, our job as data practitioners, data governance practitioners, focusing on data quality is to help to define those standards, help right. to be able to see what's right versus what's wrong and have that comparison. Well, thank you both for this presentation today. That's all we have time for today. Uh, just to remind everyone, we will be posting the recorded webinar and slides to Dataversity within a couple of business days. And we will send a follow-up email just to let you know uh, the links and other requested information throughout the webinar. Thank you again for attending today's webinar. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And please join us for Bob's 150th episode next, uh, <laughs> next time around. I'm bringing the sprite. Right. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> appreciate your help. Thank you, Danny, like always. Hey, no, thank you guys. We appreciate this. Great, great, great presentation. Okay. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.